Wow, I wasn't expecting that this music would describe my mood for this video best. Hello viewers, Tom here, and today we are heading into Gran Turismo 7. I was expecting to have a good time, do an upbeat video about how to go online when you start out with the game. Unfortunately, the experience ended up to be a bit of a disappointment, and I will tell you why. I'm an avid PC gamer, I usually play strategy games, but recently I started to play some as, uh, racing simulators like Assetto Corsa Competizione, and while I really enjoyed it, I found that the online multiplayer is fairly lacking. You only have some public lobbies, uh, and if you cannot get on the primary server, usually you are struggling to find something to play on, and the primary server tends to be very low safety rating is a problem because the races are usually chaotic so you need to dedicate at least two three hours of your time in a day to have one or two decent races which is fine if you are young and you don't have any other responsibilities but for us who are working have children dedicating that much time is just not really practical so watching super gt and the others playing gran turismo i had high hopes for the game and for its online multiplayer system so i hope that we can just jump into the game do a few live license tests and then go online. So I think I, I set myself up for failure and for disappointment, but let's see why that actually happened. So when you start out with Gran Turismo, at the start the game forces you into a music race thing where you have to drive and listen to some music without prompting you any configurations or options or setting up your wheel or doing anything. So one, once you did that, you can actually enter Gran Turismo where you are greeted by a 9 minute unskippable intro. So basically it took me 23 minutes from the moment I hit the start button on the game to the point where I actually hit the Gran Turismo menu. And if you would think that this is the end of the disappointment stream, the only menu available in there is the used car dealer. Okay, so at this point I was like, okay, let's set up my wheel. So went into the menu, found the controller options, and my wheel didn't show up. I'm using a Fanatec DD Pro, and it turns out that you need to register it as a controller. So basically hit the, in my case, the Xbox button for a long time, and then you can assign it to a player. And after that, it shows up. The problem here is that although you can now set the force feedback and some other options on the DD Pro, it only support certain type of wheels. So while the base setup is fine, the button setup on my uh, McLaren GT3 wheel is not straightforward at all. There is no way to press a button and see which one that would trigger and then just configure the desired functionality. I think you have to guess what will be what, but uh, after four hours of playing, I wasn't able to figure it out on my own. So hello Google. So now that we have a semi-functioning steering wheel, we can actually go and buy our first car, which will be a Japanese compact car. Very slow handles like crap, and you have to do races with it. I will not bore you with the details, but one thing to remember is that to go online, you don't need to do licenses. Actually, you only do need to do one. As soon as you buy your first car, a cafe opens where you can go and you will find menu books there. This will help you to unlock tracks and collect cars. In order to go online, you need to do the first nine menu books. At that point, the option for online races and daily races will open up. While in general, after the first two, three menu books, uh, the races are getting more and more interesting. There is a huge problem there. None of the races are PP limited, so basically you can go in with any car. This can help you getting online if you just want to rush through the whole thing. You can just have some highly tuned cars and go in and destroy the whole field. But actually, if you want to have a fair, decent race and gain some skills, then you, then you need to fiddle a lot with car settings and tuning and kind of getting the right PP level. Would be real nice if the game would offer you an auto configure option, which it does not. Also, in certain races, while it says like let's say 400 pp, some of, some of the opponent cars will have like 420, 430 by default. So it's not necessarily a fair race at that point. One thing to mention is that the second menu book is actually when the licensing center opens and you can do your national B license. This will be the only license that you need to get online. Also, in the licensing center, you can just take the exam. You have to do all the pre prerequisites. So it's not just, let's jump in, let's do the license exam. No, you have to do the training as well. In your national B license, if you do all the tasks to gold, you actually get an extra car. 
So my word doing it, it's not that difficult. I haven't seen any other incentives to do anything else to gold. So you can just get away with doing all of the others to bronze, but the National B license actually gets you a Mitsubishi uh, GTO, which is a cool car to have. So I recommend doing that. So the next huge disappointment I faced was when I started racing, the nationality flag to, next to my name was a British flag. In general, I didn't think too much about it. My PSN account is registered to Great Britain because I live here, but my nationality is Hungarian, so I kind of want to race under the Hungarian flag. Plus, some of my friends would say that, you know, I shouldn't embarrass Britain with my driving which is fair enough. So I started to dig into how to change my nationality in the game. And it turns out you cannot. In the PSN network, there is no nationality choice. You choose a region for where you are based. There is no question about your nationality. In order to have a different nationality in Gran Turismo, you actually need to create a different PSN account. After suffering through all this, I have figured out that I need to create a new account and start the whole thing again. And watch that nine minute unskippable brilliant intro again. So another 15 minutes later, I was under my Hungarian account and going through the menu book items. It took me about three hours to complete. I was actually trying to follow more, more or less the PP recommendations, so the races were more tight. And I was also racing on hard difficulty without knowing the tracks. And also the continuous car changes doesn't help the case. So basically in every race you will have a different car and a different track. So yeah, basically every single time you need to adjust to something new, which doesn't help with your consistency or learning, learning a certain car and makes this whole challenge a bit annoying. But not as annoying as the fact that the game actually requires you to have a PSN Plus subscription to go online and race online. I'm sure that you see where I'm going with this. My main account under the British flag actually has PSN Plus, but my newly created Hungarian account doesn't have it. So now I'm faced with a choice. I can go back to racing under the English flag or flesh out another 18,000 orins slash 35 pounds for a PSN plus. Come on, Sony and Polyphony Digital, this is just ridiculous. All this for a flag change. For sure, I'm looking much less forward to playing this game now. Hopefully this little rant slash tutorial helps you if you decide to start with the game. It might speed up your process going online, knowing some of the tricks that you can apply at the beginning. We will be going into some daily races soon, so those videos will be coming. Also, I'm planning to do a quick speed run through the intro phases of the game, just to see how quickly we can go online. So stay tuned for those videos, subscribe, like, and see you in the next one. Happy racing!